Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. My name is Kathy Burrell, and I'm an entrepreneur in residence here at WeBC. Um, I'm a consultant and a writer. I used to be a retailer for years, and uh, we're here to support you if anybody is watching this webinar that is normally on our website as well. Um, I just want to uh, go through some of the services that we offer. We offer business loans up to $150,000 but we start lending at $5,000. So depending what you're looking for, we probably have something to uh, support you with. We offer business advice through our business advisors to entrepreneurs in all stages of business, whether you're just starting out and you're just thinking about it, or whether you've been in business for five or 10 years. Um, we offer skills development workshops, very similar to this one, and we offer things on marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, to best uh, find out how, what we offer at WBC, go ahead and uh, take a look in the chat. Netta is going to um, send a link that's actually our eBlast newsletter. If you sign up for our eBlast, you'll get one email every month and you can sign up for any webinar or seminar right from the email, which is great. We also offer mentoring at WBC. So if you've been in business for a couple of years and you know you want to get to know some other women and maybe get some advice on your business, um, please connect with us. Um, and our website is fantastic, we-bc.ca. And if you do a backslash mentoring, uh, you can learn more about our mentoring program. And of course, we offer a supportive community. Being a woman in business, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to connect with other women in what they're doing. So we really love that. Um, I also want to, before we get started, just mention that um, I'm in Kelowna today and uh, that we are um, on the uh, traditional territory of the uh, Okanagan Silk people. And we recognize and honor and respect the presence of Indigenous people past, present and future. So if you'd like to type into the chat, whatever traditional territory you're on, feel free. Okay. So today we're actually going to be talking about the new Canada Buys website, which is a, according to people, a vast improvement over the old one and much more user friendly. Our last session that we did with Alexandra as well, we outlined what the government is buying. Now, if you missed that session, uh, the recording is on our website, on our resources page, but Annetta will post the link to that last session because it was, again, really informative. Um, so I just want to welcome Alexander today. Uh, Alexander Emish is our policy analyst is a policy analyst, a business engagement procurement assistant Canada. Ah, that was a mouthful. So I will leave it uh, to Alexander and I will just uh, stop sharing my screen. So welcome Alexander to the session. Bonjour, hello everyone. Thanks so much for inviting me today and also uh, for everyone who's participating. Thanks for joining us on this three-part webinar series. Give me a moment while I pull up my uh, PowerPoint and we will go from there. Okay, so can everyone see my PowerPoint? Fantastic, I'm gonna take that silence as a yes in this situation. So um, one, just wanna thank uh, WBC. Uh, you've been a fantastic partner for this. And I think that this uh, webinar series is gonna be helpful for a lot of folks. Um, I also want to acknowledge that I'm a Vancouver resident and I'm on the traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Salish Tooth First Nations. Folks, this is our second event from the three-part webinar series. In case you missed the last session, uh, it is posted on the chat, but in general, we discovered the basics of federal procurement. And today, we're going to show you how to find opportunities on the new website. And in our uh, next session, we're going to be talking about bidding on contracts. For these events, um, you're welcome to type your questions in the chat. I will address them during uh, a questions period or throughout the presentation. So just to give you an idea of what we're talking about today, we're going to talk about our office for a bit. We're going to navigate the new Canada Buys website, talk about some benefits of the website. Um, we're going to chat about different procurement strategies the government can take. 
We're going to cover the innovation for defense excellence and security, uh, just in case you missed the first webinar. And with that, we're going to begin. So welcome. This is the Finding Opportunities Seminar. If you own or operate a business and you're interested in selling goods or services to the Government of Canada, this seminar is going to provide you with some key information on how to use what's called a Government Electronic Tendering Service, or Canada Buys, to find out important information and opportunities. Government departments and agencies purchase many goods and services each year and make the requirements known through a variety of ways on an ongoing basis. The most successful suppliers are aware of what government buys and how to find opportunities. And one of the greatest sources of procurement information are these government electronic tendering services called GETS. So this uh, seminar, this webinar, um, this uh, presentation, it's developed by Procurement Assistance Canada. What Procurement Assistance Canada, or PAC for short, is uh, it was created part of PSPC to support smaller and diverse businesses in the federal procurement process. And our role, my role, is to engage with folks like yourself, engage with businesses across Pacific, and inform them on how to sell their goods and services to the government of Canada. We also want to work to reduce procurement barriers and effort to ensure fairness in the process. We also look for opportunities to increase participation of diverse businesses in federal procurement. And we do this by listening to concerns, answering questions, helping businesses understand the procurement process, and helping you identify opportunities. We also partner with community organizations like BBC and offer assistance that is tailored to meet specific business needs. And at one point, I'm going to go and share my LinkedIn account. You're welcome to reach out to me. I'll also share my email address as well. And you can send me an email and uh, we, we can have a one on one and we can chat. I also want to say that my colleague uh, Carter Bobby is with us today as well. Uh, and he is a great resource as well as part of um, the, uh, my team. And we work together on helping businesses learn about federal procurement and navigating your own uh, federal procurement journey. So today's presentation is going to cover an overview of federal procurement websites like Canada Buys. Uh, and buyandsell.gc.ca, that's our old website. Um, we're gonna do some demonstrations. We're gonna search for tenders. We're gonna go to contract history. We're going to also look at some standing offers and supply arrangements. I'm gonna show you how to follow opportunities. And I'm gonna also show you a couple of different um, ways to find opportunities with the government of Canada. So over the last few years, uh, government of Canada is the largest buyer of goods and services in Canada. And a majority of those contracts that we're buying are from smaller businesses like yourself. We buy a wide range of goods and services each year. And the values can be a couple hundred dollars to billions of dollars. And if you have the opportunity to look at the Canada Buys website, I mean, you can type in anything in the search browser and you may see an opportunity arise. Uh, we buy things like sandwiches. We buy things like website design or uh, uh, business consulting. It's a wide range of goods and services. Public Services and Procurement Canada, that's PSPC for short, is the main procurement arm of the federal government. And the government of Canada believes that competition in the buying process brings the best value for money to Canadians. More than anything, it is important that uh, to the government that all procurement activities are conducted in an open, fair, and transparent manner. And that all suppliers have an equal chance of doing business with us. So you can use the canadabuys.canada.ca to search for federal tenders. You can also use it, uh, use the uh, buy and sell website to learn about registering as a supplier, procurement applications, and upcoming events and seminars. So you can view buy and sell as now more of an information database, and you can use Canada Buys as where you would look for tenders and contracting histories. So I mentioned we're gonna talk about different procurement strategies the government takes. We mentioned a lot of the, uh, a couple of these uh, in our last webinar, 
And when it comes to Canada buys, we're, we're talking largely about competitive procurement. So you can think of this, it's going to be over $25,000 for goods, that's the contract estimate, and over $40,000 for services. When they hit those thresholds of estimated value, uh, they're going to likely be posted on the Canada Buys website. And when you're on the website, you're going to see a couple of different um, types of strategies. You might see a request for a proposal, which is issued to solicit goods or services. Uh, it's included, uh, includes a specification of the goods or services described, and also informs you of the evaluation criteria that will be used to choose the winning bid. Uh, for complex requirements, suppliers may be invited to propose a solution to a problem, a requirement, or an objective. Now, when you come across the other ones, a request for standing offer, a request for supply arrangement, these are used to solicit uh, standing offers um, and supply arrangements. What it is, you can think of this as a, these are both pre-qualified lists for potential future contracts when and if needed. So an RFSA, for example, uh, it actually may be published more than once a year, for example, quarterly, allowing new suppliers to submit an arrangement. Um, suppliers who submit that arrangement and they meet all these evaluation criteria stated in a request for supply arrangement become pre-qualified suppliers and supply arrangement holders. Now, the Government Electronic Tendering Service is the official source suppliers should rely on to find Government of Canada tenders. So be sure to check for new tenders posted on the website on a regular basis. And when I do my demo, I will show you how to make the website work more for you than you on it every day or so. So this will be a, a good way to, to show you some neat tips and tricks during that part. So federal departments and agencies, they're gonna use a government electronic tendering service like Canada Buys to advertise the requirements subject to any trade agreements. And we'll often use it for other requirements as well. Gets is by Canada buys. It's easy to navigate and allows suppliers to search for new new contract opportunities, as well as seeing past contract awards. Now, if you're interested in defense construction, um, they they don't use Canada buys. They use Mercs. And for IT contracts, uh, Shared Services Canada is the authority responsible for setting up IT contracts, standing offers, and supply arrangements. Um, so Shared Services Canada, they post their procurement opportunities on GETS, and to bid on the opportunities, suppliers would be directed from the GETS website to a uh, Shared Services Canada procure to pay portal. So there are uh, benefits of using these websites, and I'm going to talk more about them even than what this webinar is uh, has here. So, I mean, one, you know, it's free. Um, there's no registration required to use it. Um, it has a really good uh, language keyword, like a Google search. And so you can just type in different things like financing or business consulting uh, into the website, and that will help you um, search for opportunities. And there's also ways to filter as well. So you can you can filter by region or government agency or department and a lot more than just that. Third, you can find related procurement data for any tender or previous contract, as well as current standing offers and supply arrangements. And you can also search and subscribe for updates by email or web feeds. Here's a little tip. We have a thing called Good Service Identification Number, or GSIN. And you can actually search by those as well. Um, and that's like, I'll, I'll give you just some example I'm gonna make up off the top of my head, but I'm sure as you know, with accounting there's, or finance, there's a lot of different streams. Uh, if, you specify, if you specifically did auditing, for example, you may see a GSIN for that. And you can actually copy and paste or write that GSIN down and just search all of, our, all of the tender opportunities for that specific line of business. You can also then subscribe to it as well. So this way you'll get notified in email. Um, if something is posted or an update happens to a specific uh, uh, line of business. So GETS, it allows you to sort, search for information and opportunities using plain language and search terms, and just like Google. Uh, you can refine your search uh, in various ways. Uh, you can, for example, it could be like the status of the tender or region of delivery or types of goods and services. Uh, you can save your search, retrieve those results quickly, or share it with your contacts. And this just allows you to stay on top of new tenders. 
Well, there's also open procurement data. Um, so you can review uh, past contracts, past tender notices. And there's reasons why you might want to do that. Um, so let's just say you can't find a specific opportunity. Uh, and you did see that we had that specific opportunity. I'm just going to bring up auditing again. And it was you know, published a year ago or two years ago. Because everything is open, you're going to be able to see who won it, uh, the contract value, and you can actually read a little bit about uh, what that tender was about. That way you can be prepared for the next time it, it, it comes about. So I'm now going to switch things up. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to cover uh, pieces of the website. So give me a moment, folks. I'm just going to do a new screen share. I'm also going to look at the chat too. Uh, okay, so I don't see any questions at the moment, but feel free, folks. This is a good opportunity to chat with me and uh, we can uh, answer some questions, maybe live on the spot. So I'm going to go to canadabuys.canada.ca. That's our new website. And if you ever experienced our old website, you can tell this is way cleaner, pretty UI. I'm just going to give you an example of the old website too, because there's still value into this thing. So uh, this is what our old website looked like. Uh, you'll still see that there's uh, information here. Um, it's more of a repository for knowledge now, and it does also show where our webinars are. But for today, we're going to focus on the new website. So I'm on the new website. Let's just go to the homepage. I'm gonna walk you through what you're gonna to wanna to look for. So it's right in your face, search tenders. So I'm gonna click on search tenders. I'm gonna scroll down. Remember how I said that there was like a Google search for this? So that's the Google search. You can type in lots of different keywords and it will search and it will populate. It'll also, if you just want to scroll down, you'll see that there are lots and lots of tenders. They're all over the place in categories. I mean, we have aviation maintenance. We have translation subscription services. It looks like even some type of medicines as well. Uh, Department of National Defense is buying that. So I am going to use a search result called Social Procurement Initiative. And uh, we are seeing some tenders here. We're seeing one for catering services and another for something called scale up. And it's by that shared services Canada that was mentioned earlier. So a couple of things. Let's just say this was something that really interested you, that you wanted to know when Government of Canada was doing a social procurement pilot, um, meaning that they're carving out uh, a specific uh, procurement good or service uh, for a socioeconomic group. Well, you can follow the search. See this little alert button here, that little ring, that little bell? You can click on that. And scroll down. And I, I feel like most everyone here is going to want it on email. Uh, I don't know if you have Adam or RSS. I've never used those before, but you can utilize that if you're familiar with it. And I'm going to fill out my contact information and I will get notices any time uh, for attender notices, award notices, or history notices uh, for that search criteria. So remember when I talked about making the website work for you, you not working for the website? If you have a good idea of the keywords that you're involved in or interested in, it's good just to follow them, and that way you can get notified when they actually occur. So I'm going to pull up the first one. I want to know what the scale up means. Okay, so I'm looking at it. And I'm seeing a couple of key pieces of information. The first piece of information that I want you all to look at when you're looking at something that you're, you could be interested in is the closing date and time, okay? The reason it is, because this is, this is today, right? So would you have time to actually bid on this if it's today? Oh, I don't know, I don't think so. It, it could be up to you, it's your business decision to make, um, but you wanna make sure you have enough time to actually do this. You'll see it's uh, in the description. Do you offer IT goods, services, and solutions? Are you a micro or small business that's either indigenous or owned, led by an underrepresented group? So we know it says here, we know procurement process can be slow and complex and non-seclusive, and that's why we're trying out this scale-up. 
So there's a lot of these new social procurement pilots that we're implementing and that are going to be implemented in the future. Um, its goal is to kind of make things faster. And I've been reading from this, but this is true, make things faster and easier, um, as well as diversifying procurement. So its vision here, it says it wants to award hundreds of IT-related contracts, each value up to 238,000 to underrepresented businesses. And it gives you some more information on this. So it, it looks like it's it has its own different system. It's a new thing. And I wanted to kind of draw your eyes towards a couple other things here, okay? One is you wanna know what region delivery it is. It looks like it's IT related. So it's gonna be all across Canada. You wanna know the procurement method. Okay, it's competitive, it's open for bidding. Remember how I talked about the good services identification number? See this code right here? That's another thing that you can copy, you can paste, and you can just follow tender opportunities that are part of this goods and services identification number, or I like to call line of business. So a couple more pieces here. Um, this 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 webinar is a lot about leveraging the new website to to find opportunities uh, to navigate it. You see this tab here, this little part. It says partner with another business. This is a free opportunity to market yourself. You can add your company to the list of businesses who are interested in partnering, and you're going to appear um, on that tender notice. And at the right now, I don't see anyone actually posted that their their information there. So it would appear here. It would be, you know, Alexander's IT business with my contact information and other businesses who go and look at this tender would come across your name. So that could be lead generating for you. Uh, could be getting your name out there. Um, just it, it's also could be used if you are looking at a specific tender and, hey, I, I don't meet all the requirements, but I meet some of them. Uh, you would need to maybe partner with another business to actually meet those requirements. It's a good opportunity to market yourself. So I'm going to keep going on the new website. And give me a moment. I'm just going to go back to the main page here. So in the webinar, it talks about all the information that you can use on this new website. So if you see how this arrow points to tender notices, what if you couldn't find your specific line of business and you, you wanted to know what it looked like, you know, who won what and where in the past? Well, click on award notices. Okay, so there's a couple of different awards or, or tenders that have been awarded. Um, I'm just going to click on a random one here, folks, and maybe it'll be a good one. Okay, so we don't really know what this is, but we do know who the company it was awarded. So Modus Canada. We know it was uh, Informatics Professional Services. We know the, the goods and services identification number. We know when it was closed. We know how it was won, what trade agreements it was part of. The uh, businesses that were, um, so we talked a little bit earlier about supply arrangements and standing offers about how you can uh, put yourself into these lists of pre-qualified suppliers or bidders. Um, so you can see all the folks that were pre-qualified to submit a proposal here. This name here, the contracting authority, you're going to see this uh, majority of tenders. Um, these are these folks are responsible for the the, the specific tender. Um, they're they're going to be able to answer more technical related questions. Uh, there is a questions period uh, during tenders in which you can reach out to them, um, and it's good information to know that contract authority are the folks that you can ask those technical questions or tender specific questions too. Uh, us at Procurement Assistance Canada, we're here to help educate you on the process, provide assistance, awareness, and education on the whole cycle. Um, but if you had a tactical question, uh, you were looking at a specific tender, it was asking for you to, I'll give you an example, I'll tell you a story. So um, there, was a, there was a tender a while back, and it was the RCMP was looking for USBs uh, for police officers. And in the tender notice, it was saying that it should be steel. Well, a supplier was like, why would it be steel? Like, why does that matter? Why couldn't it be rubber? I mean, rubber is just as good as steel, especially in certain environments. Um, and so they asked the contracting authority, 
hey, I'm looking at this tender. I see that you folks are asking um, it to be steel USBs. Um, is there a way to also for it to be rubber? Would that be appropriate? Well, the contracting authority reviewed that, said, oh, you know, it's actually pretty reasonable. And they amended the contract. So I'm going to show you what that would look like. So let me go back. I'm just going to pick, let's see if this is a good one. Yes, this is a good one. Okay, so this is just another tender I'm using as an example. Um, if you wanted to know where uh, something like that would appear, it would be under amendments. Uh, you would click on the bidding details, which is your top three tabs, and you would see different amendments lining up where the contracting authority is answering questions or they are making augmentations to the, co the, uh, the tender notice. Um, and it, this leads us to our next part too. So not only can you search for general lines of business or general keywords, you could also follow the notice. So let's just say you were interested in that USB uh, tender. Um, you are getting your bid ready. You're going to submit for steel tenders. Um, you're, you know, you're excited about that. You, you, you're going to want to also follow the notice because let's just say that was amended where, you know, amendment one, let's just imagine it's right here. Uh, contract authority agrees that it can be steel or rubber USBs. Uh, you'd want to be able to get updated with that information so you can augment your potential bid. And you can do that by following this notice. Same procedure as before, you enter in your contract information or your contact information, um, and they'll email you out uh, notices related to that tender opportunity. So I'm just going to go back a little bit. I'm just going to go start from square one again. And I'm just curious if anyone in the chat wants to just write their line of business. Maybe we can find an opportunity and, and go through it. Um, I'm gonna, I'll give everyone a, a minute or two to do that. Um, but yeah, let me know and we'll just do a quick search. <laughs> nice to see, okay, so Brianna and me had a great one-on-one -on -one recently. It's good to see her again. Um, Project Management Administration. Okay, I think I know that will be Pro Services, but we're just gonna, oops, we'll type that in. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to click on a random one. Just uh, I know it might not be perfect, but it's just going to give you an idea of what, what something could look like. Okay, so project administrator, senior. This is part of the, a supply arrangement called Task and Solution Professional Services. Uh, we're, we're looking at, of course, the closing date. Okay, so this one was already closed. We're looking at region delivery. Okay, national capital region. Um, it looks like its uh, value could be, you know, even greater, or it's multi-million dollar value. Um, has some security requirements on it. Gives you an estimated date of effort. Here's the uh, contracting authority. Like I said, if you had something technical you wanted to talk to about this specific tender, you could reach out to this person. And because this is part of a supply arrangement, so folks are already pre-qualified uh, for this supply arrangement and were noticed, notified, um, you can see that there's a list of suppliers here. All of these folks uh, were notified of this. And I, if you remember me earlier, I say you could also find lead opportunities too. So you already know this is closed, but you're seeing a ton of different businesses that maybe you could partner with or reach out to a subcontract or maybe just you know do regular business with. Um, so it's really useful for a lot of folks just trying to find lead generation um, that you can uh, utilize our website and find opportunities. 
And I'm going to just go back to the presentation real quickly, and I'm going to, I will do this more as we continue, um, but I do need to continue covering some more of these slides. And uh, I will, if you have any specific questions too about Canada buys that you want me to, to do, I'll be happy to go through that. Okay. Um, so if everyone is seeing the, the uh, 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 PowerPoint, um, there is also more information about opportunities. There's a resources tab. Um, there's a support tab. Um, you can uh, search for award notices. We covered that. Um, there's also some procurement data. I'll share that link with you um, at the end of this. So just in case you missed the last webinar, um, there is an also a very interesting program that we partner with called IDEAS, which is Innovation for Defense Excellence and Security. Uh, so this is the Department of National Defense and DMDs and K Armed Forces Access to Innovation Program, and it's seeking to transform defense and security challenges being faced by various partners in the DMD and K Armed Forces. Uh, so this is like your Air Force, Navy, Army, Special Forces, and others uh, into innovative solutions to help improve Canada's defense capabilities. So the reason we're bringing this up in this webinar, we're bringing it up too, is in general, there are a lot of opportunities with the federal government and there are different shops you can imagine as well. So what I cover is uh, procurement. Uh, we also uh, cover uh, ideas, which is an innovation uh, accelerator program. Um, and so I'll do a demo on ideas as well. Um, and this is this was generated. This program was generated um, because uh, government used to have a specific department that did research and development, uh, but they found that non-traditional players, uh, small businesses, uh, academics, private sector in general, uh, can generate some amazing different solutions. Um, as the nature of conflicts and threats grow and evolve, Canada's national defense and security system uh, needs to be more inclusive and collaborative and integrative. And that's a, a big generator of this program. And there's funding for this, folks. There's uh, five different elements. Um, the competitive projects provides 1.2 million in phase development. Um, innovation networks, if you're part of an academic institution. Uh, these are, provides up to 1.5 million to encourage collaboration and build a network. Um, there are contests, uh, there are sandboxes that you can test out and demonstrate your solutions. Um, there are test drives as well for more completed projects. Uh, so there's a lot of different elements for this and you can participate on uh, using the website. And I'm gonna go show you the website real quickly. Okay, one moment here, folks. It's got to go head over there. Okay, so this is the ideas website. I will share this with you after the chat as well. And I'm going to show you some of the new challenges that are posted. And you can see it's it's all over. The, it's all very different. I mean, some of them are how to you know uh, transit personnel. Some of them are medical resupply. There was one that I, I find interesting. So this was a uh, challenge that was looking to recruit and retain and reach 25 representation of women by 2026 in the Canadian Armed Forces. So they were looking for you know, different HR strategies, um, and you can see a lot of the, the different universities and companies that won. So some folks focused on smart recruiting. Uh, so this is Extract Technology won this. They won $1 million for this. Uh, another one, I'm not sure what this is. I'm assuming it's another type of recruiting website. That's another million dollars that they were successful in. Um, you can see some universities also competed for this. And the reason why this is interesting to me, and I think the ideas website is interesting to me, is because this webinar is about leveraging new things to, to, to find opportunities. Um, let's just say this one, this challenge specifically already closed. But Remember I mentioned that we're going to be open and transparent about who won what and where and for what. And as you see here, there's a couple of different companies. And if you're involved in HR or involved in uh, 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 website design, um, these companies want a significant amount of money to complete this challenge. And I'll tell you a story. Um, I, was work, I was talking to a uh, 
um, a veteran who was successful in the Ideas Challenge. And the Ideas Challenge was uh, when soldiers retire and they become veterans, um, they may have gained a lot of skills in the armed forces. Um, but those skills don't, there's no website or so that, you know, plugs in signals officer and says, so oh, these are your actual certificates you would have. Uh, so he was able to create a unique website that was able to connect. It's a mixture of like LinkedIn, like a job board, all sorts of things. And he won a, a significant amount of funding. And I remember I asked him, I said, you know, what are, what is your challenge right now? And he said, I've received a, a, a lot of money to scale up my operations. And that's my challenge is how do I utilize all this money to, to subcontract and to recruit and to, to build this. So the folks here who want a million uh, you know, dollars in uh, uh, funding, uh, they might be looking for, uh, for different businesses to help them, help them get to that next stage, see how there's different stages here. And so it's a good opportunity for you to be aware of the IDEAS website and to investigate different challenges. And even if you don't see one that you that is open today, you can leverage it and find new leads uh, to offer your services or goods to. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. Give me a moment, just transitioning over. So that you can uh, go to the website, um, I recommend subscribing to the mailing list. Um, you can also reach out to myself as well if you're just kind of want someone to, to walk you through the website and look at opportunities there. Um, so that, that's just some interesting things that you can see. I'm gonna come back to the webinar, we're almost finished. I'm gonna do more demos because we have some time um, and feel free to cut me off uh, if, we're, if we're getting a little close to the, the, the time period, I'm gonna answer some more questions too. Um, so just in general, you're going to see some tender opportunities that require electronic biddings. Um, when you're on these different opportunities on the Candidvise website, it may direct you to a, uh, to a SAP Ariba, um, and you can uh, register on SAP Ariba to access the electronic procurement solution through Candidvise. Uh, you can register for free um, and do bidding online. Um, once you register, you can use the same login and bid on other tenders that require electronic bidding. And over time, more opportunities will be processed through electronic bidding. Um, that's part of our new website. It's part of our uh, modernization of procurement. Um, for some tenders, you may need to be registered on the supplier registration information system and have a procurement business number. Um, these tenders require bid submission through conventional methods, such as a PSBC bid receiving unit or through Canada Post's uh, Connect system. Um, each opportunity is going to actually tell you very specifically what the requirements are for submitting a bid. So do make sure when you're reviewing that tender on that Candabuy website that you're looking at the instructions and reading everything. You can follow opportunities. I've mentioned that before. Um, there's a lot of detailed instructions on it. Um, and if in general you have any issues registering or just need some support, there's actually a Candabuy service desk. Um, and I can also help you too, depending on the question too. So we do a lot of different um, seminars. Um, we're doing a three-part series. We've kind of modified some of the seminars to, to make this work. Um, if you're interested in going to another seminar um, in general, we, you can use that buy and sell website and um, view uh, events and opportunities there. Um, the buy and sell still has some information, uh, has information about security clearances and uh, just general uh, uh, pieces of uh, know-how. And if you're not in Pacific region, um, there are Procurement Assistance Canada offices across the country. We are here to help you. We're here to help you navigate your federal procurement journey. Um, I'm happy to have a one-on-one -on -one with anyone. You can reach out to me as much as you want. I, I know I've talked to some folks on this chat. Um, if you ever have any follow-up questions for folks that I have talked to, reach out to me. I'm happy to, to chat with you. Um, so in general, uh, if you are wanting to know next steps, um, if you can uh, uh, look at about registering on buy and sell, you can register on SAP Ariba. Um, there's a lot of different uh, uh, things that you can find information for. You can also just give us a call too and we can help you as well. I'm going to look at the chat real quick and I'm because I have some time, I'm going to also go through some questions too, okay?
Okay, so cleaning services. So someone asked, they wanted me to type in cleaning services on Canada Buys. So I'm gonna type in janitorial services. I believe that's how we refer to it. And I assure you there is a lot of demand for this. I've seen it many times. I usually even use that as an example. So um, lots of, uh, of janitorial services, but of course you folks, I think are living in British Columbia. So remember in the uh, slide where it talked about uh, ways to leverage the website and that you can filter things. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and click filter. Let's go filter by location. Let's cross our fingers. We have something for BC right now. Uh, I'm gonna click on BC. I'm gonna apply the filter and let's see what we get. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, see if I can change the closing date. Give me a second here. Let's go back to this. Maybe let's narrow this down a little bit. Let me actually um, see if I can narrow it to Vancouver specific. So let's do Vancouver. You know, Burnaby's close enough. I feel like all of these are reachable. Apply filter. See what we have. May not have anything right now, but we might. Okay, so these, so one of the reasons we talked about GSINs is because it's looking for anything with this keyword in it. So it might come up with stuff that have a line item that say janitorial services. Might not be the best fit, but let's just click on one and see what happens. Let's see what information we have here. Oh, so remember how I mentioned that sometimes on the website, it's going to ask you to go to Sapariba. So this tender opportunity is available on Sapariba. That if you clicked on this, it would bring you to another link and you can go investigate on the Sapariba side uh, information about that. This is the contracting authority, so Lee Hilda. You can reach out to them if you have some specific uh, questions that are tender related on the Sapariba website. For this, it, it looks like it just says hotel servicing, and this is because most of the information is on Sapariba. So it's not going to post it all the information, the description, like we saw in other tenders. It's going to, to bring you to Sapariba's website, and it will have more detailed information there. And I'm going to remove some of these filters, and I'm just going to do Canada. And we're just going to see what a janitorial contract just in general looks like, something a little more simple. Okay, so this is closed, but we're going to go click on it and see what it says. Okay, so it says Correction Services Canada. It's looking for janitorial services for Bowdoin. Assuming, okay, so this is Alberta is our region of opportunity here. Okay, it looks like deliverables. Contractors expected to provide all the labor tools and supervisions. It gives you the period of contract. This is the contracting authority. If you want to get a little bit more details, you would click on the bidding details tab. And you could click on this. Let's see what it says. So this PDF is going to give you detailed information. We're going to cover more about bidding in the next webinar. But this is just going to be a, a little bit of an overview of what it would what it could look like. So give it a second to load. And so when you look at an RFP like this, it's, it's gonna give you every little detailed piece of information. And it can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming. I always just say, get a big cup of coffee. If you're really interested in it, you know, go through the whole entire thing. I do mandatory. I'm not gonna to cover too much about this, but this is gonna to talk to you about the background, the objectives, uh, even gives you the scope after 4 p.m. on Mondays, um, the tasks. So it looks like you'd be cleaning a pharmacy three days a week, a nursing station, uh, carpet and air. See, it's, it's so specific, folks. Floors to be washed and disinfected. I can zoom in if I'm having trouble seeing that. So it's very detailed information here. I'm going to see about if I have any other good examples before we come to a close. Okay. 
Okay, so I think I, I, I can cover pro services, but I feel like that's going to be a little bit more on the bidding webinar. Um, so just in general, folks, this is the new website. It's a lot more user friendly. It has support on it. You can go look at tender opportunities on this too. Uh, you can email us, you can call us and chat with us. You can search for resources as well. Um, lots of different pieces here. Um, there's even an, a mobile app to access SAP Ariba from your mobile device. Uh, gives you information about our news and events. Um, I'm going to share my LinkedIn info as well. I, I sometimes post opportunities that I see on this um on uh, either ideas or on buy uh, on canada buys so here's my linkedin feel free to add me we also do a lot of events too and uh, we post those on linkedin so if you're interested in seeing us talk in a panel with webc sometimes as well I, we've been on two events together um it'd be a good opportunity to follow me and i'll, I'll make sure i share those um, so I'm going to stop the screen share. I'm just going to see if anyone has just general questions that they want to ask. Um, there's a lot of information we covered today, folks. So uh, I, it's like a fire hose sometimes. And I really do recommend uh, reaching out to me in a one on one. Um, I will I will do what I can within 30 minutes to give you information. If it's something specific, we can we can narrow it in on that. Um, but in general, I, I think that's a, a great audience. Uh, I think based on what I saw in the chat, um, like website development, project management, uh, cleaning services. We we do we we buy all these uh, type of services and goods. So um, uh, with that, uh, I will I guess open it up to the crowd. If you want to come off of mute and uh, ask me a question, I'll do my best to answer it. If I don't know the answer, I'll I'll, I'll do some research and find you it. And thanks, Alexander. That was great. And yeah, anybody can just raise their hand or unmute themselves. I'm going to share my screen now because we're about 10 minutes to the close. But otherwise, yeah, it's it's been a great, a great session. So uh, thank you to Alexander. And uh, yeah, we've got a few minutes left. Um, any questions or again, you're going to receive this via uh, a link uh, tomorrow. So but go ahead somebody actually had a, a question i think is there a link to alexander's one-on-one -on -one? so just uh, alexander speaking uh send me an email or a linkedin message and we'll, we'll schedule something together um just a 30 minutes microsoft teams chat uh and we can we can keep having as many sessions uh, as you want, uh, we're we're always looking for a long term relationship with a uh, with a supplier. Uh, so I, I'm here for you for your whole entire journey. Let me know when you win too, if you if you end up winning a contract award. But yeah, I, I'm here for you. I posted my email in the chat. Uh, I believe Netta's going to also share it too in the uh, 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 post uh, event email. And Alexander, actually, I had a question as well, like for a lot of women in business, you know, if they're a small business, but they're considering scaling up by actually looking for a government contract, does their business have to be registered just in the province that they are? They can just register in BC or does it have to be a, a Canada wide registration or do you know anything about that? So just to answer your question, um, so when you are actually going to register your um, your business with uh, whether that's to get a procurement business number or uh, in the supplier registration information system, we didn't have too much time to cover that today, folks. There's, there's a lot of stuff, but um, you will put your location down. Um, it does depend on the bid. Let's just say you're doing janitorial services. Um, if you're in BC and you're applying for an Ontario uh, uh, contract, uh, it might say specifically it's looking uh, for folks within the area. Um, just you want to look at the tender notice. Like that's what really matters is the tender notice. Um, it, it's going to tell you specifically about uh, your eligibility. Um, you need to make sure you meet all the mandatories there. Um, it's from off the top of my head, it, I, I would say it just depends on the tender. Um, but by registering as a BC business isn't going to hurt you at all. Um, it, it's just going to, for let's just say Sapariba, it might filter opportunities for you that make sense um, for uh, um, the, the current business number or supplier registration information system. Um, it, it, you know, those type of things are just for a tombstone data. Um, it's all about your bid. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that. 
Now, does anyone else have any questions? We're, we've got probably ooh, five minutes left. Any questions for Alexander? Not a question. I just wanted to say for anybody hesitating to reach out to Alexander and meet with him, don't just go ahead and do it. He can help you from the most micro thing to the most macro thing. And so just jump in and meet with him. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brad. I, I really enjoyed our session last. And, and when you're ready for another one, just send me an email. We'll schedule it. For sure. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. And that's not exactly what most people say about working with the government or something. <laughs> the government. So congratulations, Alexander. You're one of the best. I, I appreciate that. There's a lot of good <laughs> folks. So don't, uh, don't underestimate that. You'd be surprised how amazing yeah. people are that, that join the federal government or are here to help you. Yeah. And, and FYI, my whole business is based around working with government. And so I also disagree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, actually, everybody, you're still feel free uh, to reach out to Alexander. If you have a question after the session, if you think of something at midnight tonight, you can go ahead and uh, send an email to WeBC as well, and we'll make sure we get it to Alexander. I just want to remind everybody that, yeah, you are going to receive this tomorrow, uh, a link to this session, and you'll have all the contact information that you need. I just want to draw your attention to some upcoming events that WeBC is doing, um, bidding uh, we did bidding best practices today, but we're doing a, a guide to importing raw materials for your business. Um, and, you know, we like to provide you with um, something that, you know, you're, you want to see here at WBC. So if we're just going to do a little poll at the end here, just saying, you know, we hope everybody enjoyed it. And uh, if you've got any suggestions for other webinars, that would be wonderful. And uh, yeah. Any other questions for Alexander while we finish the poll? There it is. Okay, so Alexander, any final thoughts or? I, I would just say this. I, I think that everyone who came to today's session and WBC is amazing. You are all looking and taking time out of your day for uh, developing yourself and finding new opportunities. And I just wish you the best with your journey uh, in your business uh, and in life. So just thanks again for, for coming. And I'm, I'm very appreciative. Wonderful. This has been another great session, Alexander. And I tell you, you know, you're changing people's lives by, uh, you know, making them aware of these opportunities. And again, the being so uh, transparent in the idea that yes, uh, the government is looking to work with small suppliers. Yes, you know, women are an underrepresented group. So why don't we take advantage of that? So we can't thank you enough. And uh, with that, I think I'm gonna let everybody go. And thank you very much for the session today. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Keep in touch, everybody. There's all our contact information. <laughs>